Hey ho, hey, 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 hey ho! Here we go with chapter 14, lesson number 4, further integration. Now, if you remember back when we were looking at differentiating something like 3x take away 4 all to the power of 5, we had to apply the chain rule. What's the chain rule, Sandy? Helps out. Excellent. That is when you differentiate outside the brackets, then you differentiate inside the brackets, and you multiply both answers together. What we've also got to do is if we want to integrate something like that, the 3x take away 4, all to the power of 5, well, we also have to deal with the brackets. And here is how we do it. So the steps. Step 1, you would add 1 to the power outside the brackets. So 3x take away 4, all to the power of 5, well, the 5 would go up to a 6. So you'd have 3x take away 4 to the power of 6. After that, step 2, you divide by this new power, keeping the brackets just as they are. So after we've increased the power to a 6, we then have a 3x take away 4 to the power of 6, and then divide by 6. What we would then have if we were integrating? Well, we then look at what's inside the brackets, and we differentiate what is inside. So the differentiating part just remains the same, just the way you would do with the chain rule. So if you differentiate that, you would just get 3. And when you're applying the chain rule, and you're differentiating, you would multiply by that 3. But when you're integrating, instead, you divide by the derivative. So you would divide by the 3. So you'd end up with a 3x take away 4 to the power of 6, divide by 6. But you'd also bring that 3 down as well. So you'd have a 6 times 3 on the bottom. And what else do you need? Sunday helps out. Brilliant. When you are integrating, if you do not have your limits, you would need to include your plus c. One way of writing that is like this. So if you're integrating ax plus b to the power of n with respect to x, well, you add 1 to the power, so you'd have ax plus b to the power of n plus 1, and then you divide by that n plus 1. What you also do, as it says here, is you divide by the derivative of what's inside the brackets. So if you differentiate ax plus b, you just have a, so you move that to the bottom as well, and you divide by that. If there's something already on the bottom, well, you would multiply them both together. And don't forget your plus c. A couple of notes. First note is n cannot equal negative 1. You could not have, for example, 2x plus 7 to the power of negative 1. Because if you do have that and you add 1 to the power, well, you'd add 1 to negative 1, which will give you 0. Then you're dividing by 0 and you can't divide by 0. So you cannot do it that way. There is another way that you would do it, which will be introduced to you in advanced higher maths. And the second note, the expression inside the brackets must be linear. So the highest power of x must be 1. So it must be of the form ax plus b. You cannot have something squared or anything inside the brackets. Let's try some examples then. Example 1, integrate x plus 5 to the power of 6. So following these steps, you add 1 to the power outside the brackets. So you'd have x plus 5 to the power of 7. What you then do is you would divide by this new power, so you're dividing by the 7, but doink, and you would also divide by the derivative of what's inside the brackets. So inside the brackets, if you differentiate x plus 5, what do you get, Grace? 1. Good, so you divide by 1. So really, you do 1 times 7, which is 7, so you just keep that as it is. And, as I'm sure you just saw, you also need that plus c. Excellent. Example 2. Integrate. 3x take away 2, all to the power of 4. So following these steps, first of all, add 1 to the power outside the brackets. Keeping the brackets just as they are, we'd have 3x take away 2 to the power of 5. We would then divide by that new power, so we'd divide by 5. But what you then do is you differentiate what's inside the brackets. So 3x take away 2 differentiates to become 3, and we would divide by the 3, which is why in the bottom we divide by the new power, so we've got the 5, but we've also got that 3. Okay, it's a derivative of the 3x take away 2. From there, make sure you do have plus c, you need that right the way down. And from there, we could tidy that up, because 3 times 5, I'm sure you all know what that is, that would just become 15. So you've got 3x take away 2 to the power of 5 over 15, plus c. Example 3, integrate 1 minus x all to the power of 3. So the first thing that you would do, Matthew, would be? Good, you add 1 to the power outside the brackets, so you'd have 1 take away x to the power of 4. What would you then do? Well, you divide by that new power, so we're dividing and we'd have the 4. What you then do is you need to think, right, well, if you differentiate what's inside the brackets, so 1 take away 1x, 
If you differentiate that, you'd be left with negative one. Make sure you have that negative. So you'd have negative one, so you divide by the negative one as well, which is why in the bottom, you'd have the four, and you've also got the negative one. And don't forget your plus C, Mazal. From there, you've got one take away X to the power of four, and you're dividing by that negative four. You could always put the negative to the side. You don't have to. And you've got the four in the bottom there as well. And remember, plus C. Example four, integrate one over three X plus one to the power of five. Again, with respect to X. So DX, instead of being at the side, is just written here. So it's on top. What's the first thing you would have to do then with this one, Andrew? Excellent, well done. You cannot integrate or differentiate if x is on the bottom of a fraction. And here we've got x in the bottom of a fraction. So how would we rewrite it, Andrew? Excellent, you just move that to the top. So you can't just move the x because it's included with the multiply by three and the add one and then it's all to the power of five. So you'd have to move the three x plus one all to the power of five up to the top line. And the way you would do it is you would move it up and the index would change from a positive five to a negative five. Excellent. So you're integrating 3x plus 1 to the power of negative 5 with respect to x. From here, x is not on the bottom of a fraction. There's no root sign, so you can then go into integration. For this, because we've got brackets and we've got our powers, we need to, to think about following these steps. So add 1 to the power of negative 5. Add 1 will give us negative 4, so it becomes 3x plus 1 to the power of negative 4. We divide by that negative 4, but we also divide by the derivative of the brackets. So 3x plus 1 differentiates to become 3, and we divide by that. So we'd have the 3 times the negative 4. And don't forget your plus c. From there, 3 times negative 4 would be a negative 12. So let's just take the negative to the front. 12 is going to stay on the bottom. But we'd have the 3x plus 1 to the power of negative 4 with a negative index. It's normally best to write with a positive index. So if you move that down to the bottom with the 12, you'd have 3x plus 1 to the power of positive 4. And again your plus c. Example 5, 2x take away 7 to the power of a half. Integrate that. Go on then, Arden, help us out. Yeah, well done, you add 1 to the power, so the half would become 3 over 2. So we'd have 2x take away 7 to the power of 3 over 2. What do we then do, Arden? Good, you divide by that new power, so we'd divide by 3 over 2. What else would you be dividing by, though, Arden? Good, you're dividing by 2. So we would divide by the 2, and we divide by the 3 over 2. The 3 over 2 is the new power, so we're dividing by that, and you also differentiate what's inside the bracket, so if you differentiate that, you would get 2, so that is why you would divide it by the 2 as well. From there, 2 times the 3 over 2, well really the times by 2, the divide by 2 will cancel out, leaving you just with over 3, and therefore your answer will be 2x take away 7 to the power of 3 over 2 over 3. Plus C. Woo! Example 6. Again, integrate 1 over the cube root of 6x take away 5. Again, dx. dx has just been written at the side. Uh, it's not been written at the side. It's just been moved up to the top. But that still means 1 over the cube root of 6x take away 5. So the first thing you've got to do then, Iman, help us out. Well done, good. You've got root signs in here. You've also got x in the bottom of a fraction, so we need to rewrite it. If you have the cube root, Olivia, how could you rewrite the cube root? Brilliant, that's the power of one third. So you'd have one over the six x take away five in brackets to the power of one third. What would you then do, Olivia? Move it to the top, excellent. So you would end up with six x take away five to the power of negative one third. Here, you would have it in brackets to the power of a third. If you move up to the top, the index will change from positive to a negative. Woohoo! So you'd have negative one third. From there, you're following these steps. So add one to the power. So negative one third. Add one will give us, well, I'll do a negative one add three. You end up with two. So it becomes two thirds. So we've got six x take away five to the power of two thirds. And we would divide by that power. So we're dividing by the two thirds. What else do we divide by, Mary Lou? Excellent, we also divide by the 6. So you're dividing by the 2 thirds and you're also dividing by the 6. Because they're both in the bottom, multiply them together. So for this, 6 times 2 divided by 3 will give you 4. So we'd end up with 6x take away 5 to the power of 2 thirds over 4. 
and whenever you integrate, you're going to have this plus C. So we'd also have that, and that's your answer. Hey, hey. Next one. Example seven, integrate three X plus four to the power of three over two. But this time we're wanting to integrate between four and negative one. So we've got these limits here. So first thing that you would do then is follow these steps. We add one to the power. So three over two add one. Well, do three, add two and you get five. So it would be five over two. So we've got three X plus four to the power of five over two. And we would divide by that power as well. So we're dividing by the five over two. What else would you divide by, Valley? The three, excellent. Because if you differentiate what's inside the brackets, we've got three. So you divide by the three and you divide by the new power, the five over two. Because we've got limits here, we don't include plus C. You don't have the plus C whenever you've got limits. So you just put in your big square brackets and we know we're integrating between four and negative one. So square brackets and you're putting these limits down. From there, you could tidy this up slightly. If you do three times five, you get 15. We're dividing that by two, so really we're dividing by 15 over two. Remember when you're dividing by a fraction, really you can turn the fraction upside down. So 15 over two would become two over 15, and you're multiplying by that. Or the quick way, if you have 15 over two, move the very bottom of the fraction just up to the top line. So we'd end up with two over 15. So really, from that then, we'd have 2 over 15 times, and then rewriting this just with roots so we can then evaluate it when we're subbing in these values. On the bottom, that's going to be the root, so it's just the square root. So we've got the square root of 3x plus 4, but then that will be to the power of 5. Think about flower power. So flower, on the bottom you've got the roots, so that's going to be the square root. And at the top you've got the flower, which rhymes with power, so the power is going to be 5. So it's a square root of 3x plus 4, all to the power of 5. From there, we can sub in these values. So we're subbing in the 4, we're subbing in the negative 1. So if you sub 4 into that, 3 times 4 add 4 gives you 16. So it's a square root of 16 to the power of 5. And we're multiplying by the 2 over 3. You're going to be subtracting whatever you get when you sub in negative 1. So 3 times negative 1 add 4 will give you 1. So it's the square root of 1 to the power of 5 multiplied by the 2 over 15. Work that out, and the square root of 16 is 4, 4 to the power of 5 gives you 1024, square root of 1 is 1, do that to the power of 5, you get 1, so it's really 2 over 15 times 1024, take away 2 over 15 times 1, which will give you 2046 over 15, or if you wrote that as a decimal, it goes to 136.4, and that would be your answer. Woohoo! Here we go. Example 8. Once again, integrate one over the square root of one plus two x, but this time we've got limits again, so we're integrating between four and zero. So the first thing you would have to do, well, you've got x in the bottom of a fraction, you've got root signs, so we need to rewrite it. So keep your integral sign just as it is. We're not integrating just yet. We need to rewrite this. So square root means the power of a half. So in the bottom, we'd have in brackets one plus two x to the power of a half, but we don't want x in the bottom of a fraction. So we'd then move all of that up to the top. So we'd have in brackets one plus two x to the power of, and the half would change to negative one half when we move that up. From there, well, we don't have x in the bottom of a fraction. We don't have any root signs. So now we can integrate following these steps. So add one to the power outside the brackets. So keep the brackets as they are. And we'd have one plus two x to the power of negative a half add one will give you a positive one half. From there, you divide by that new power. So you would divide by a half. What else would we divide by though, Liba? Two, good, because if you differentiate what's inside the brackets, the one plus two x, you would end up with two. So we'd be dividing by the two and we'd also be dividing by that new power. From there, put in your big square brackets. We are not going to have plus C again because we've got limits. Whenever you have limits, you do not have plus C. I'm just putting that in as a step just to remind you that you do always need your plus C unless you've got the limits. From this then, well, if you do two times a half, well, that's just going to be one. So we're really going to have one plus two X to the power of a half or the square root of one plus two X uh, over one, which we don't even need to bother putting in. From there, the limits, we've got four and zero. So, you know, you're going to sub in four in place of X. Then you're going to be subtracting what you get when you sub in zero in place of X. So we'd end up with the square root of one plus two times four, which is the square root of nine. Take away 
one, uh, one plus two times zero, and then square root it, so it becomes the square root of one. So the square root of nine, take away the square root of one. Well, you know the square root of nine is three, square root of one is one, and three take away one is obviously two. So that will be your answer. Try some of these questions. They are in the TJ Higher page 229, exercise five. Check your answers as you go. Let me know if you have any issues and think about how well you are getting on with these. Good luck, have fun. Adios, bye, sayonara, woo.